Welcome to California Project Lean and the California School Boards Association's online video workshop for MVPA, Moderate to Vigorous Physical Activity. This workshop will explore how school districts can consider policy and curriculum strategies to support increased physical activity. With shrinking budgets and increased pressure to improve academic achievement, school governance leaders are facing challenging decisions on behalf of students. Even in this environment, it's clear that schools play a central role in providing opportunities for students to engage in physical activity. Today, our expert panel will share information with us about how physical education, PE class, is the one time during the day when all students can be active. Let me introduce our speakers. James F. Salas is a distinguished professor of psychology at San Diego State University and the director of Active Living Research, a program of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Dr. Salas's research interests include promoting physical activity and understanding policy and environmental influences on both physical activity and nutrition. Jane Russo is the superintendent of the Santa Ana Unified School District. With some 55,000 students, it's the largest school district in Orange County. Ms. Russo's career began more than three decades ago as a classroom teacher. She was named interim district superintendent in 2006 and formally appointed to that post in January of 2007. Kenneth Dyer is the coordinator of physical education, wellness, and athletic competition for the Delano Union School District in Kern County. Mr. Dyer has earned a Bachelor of Science degree in physical education from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and was selected as a California Teacher of the Year in 2006. Nice to have you all with us today. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Dr. Salas, let me start with some basic information and let me start with you. Moderate to vigorous physical activity, why is it important? And I guess the question is, how much do you need to get? Yeah. Well, the national recommendations for youth are to get 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a day, which is more than just shuffling along. It, it requires brisk walking or, or greater. Um, unfortunately, uh, most children and adolescents are not getting this kind of uh, activity at that level. Um, so the, the vast majority of uh, secondary school students and the majority even of elementary school students are not meeting this guideline. So then why is, why is this important to be active? Well, one is for mental health. Um, youth that are active and fit um, have fewer symptoms of anxiety and depression, more, they're more likely to be, uh, have high self-confidence, mm -hmm. uh, they do better in the day. And that's important to the adults around them as well as to the kids themselves. Sure. And then there's um, uh, obvious issue around childhood obesity, uh, a major problem today. Um, and so getting kids to do more energy expenditure, more physical activity, is going to reduce their risk of becoming overweight or obese or help them uh, become normal weight. So uh, this physical health and uh, avoidance of chronic disease is important. And um, the other reason that we want to educate people about is, are the educational benefits. Children who are active and fit do better in school better grades, better standardized achievement tests, uh, less disciplinary problems, that sort of thing. So the, the evidence is really quite strong about that. Um, and it's important um, for uh, the educational audience here to understand that um, giving kids an activity break during the school day helps them focus, mm -hmm. helps them pay attention, uh, and uh, improves their academic achievement. Wow. Well, Ken, given all of these very significant points, if I may ask then, uh, what do you see? What kind of strategies could be implemented to sort of, uh, I guess, to improve the physical activity arrangements, give the kids a chance to get that you know, moderate to vis vigorous physical activity that they mm -hmm. really need. Well, the first thing that physical educators need to do, any teacher who's responsible for teaching physical education to our kids, they need to teach to the standards. California has model content standards for physical education. And the standards were written to support lifetime health and fitness. They were written to support kids learning to love being physically active. So that's the first thing. Specific strategies, though, what they can do is 
Number one is organize your class for activities. Don't, or, you know, make sure that there are no standing in line, no kids standing in line. That you have one piece of equipment for every two kids, ideally. Um, limit the teacher talking. It, make sure that it's the kids being active and the teacher is not just being the sage on the stage and, and blathering off the whole time. Um, you want to embed the fitness elements into the lesson so that there's some kind of fitness as part of every single physical education lesson. Um, and then you, you want to have some instant activity. So when you get outside, we want the kids to be instantly active so they can get going. And I want to show you one right now so we can all stand up. We'll, oh, okay. we'll do an instant That'd activity together. Sure. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right. This one's called off the line. So you're going to turn and face your partner. All right. Okay. And then you're going to put your feet together so like you're standing on a tightrope. Mm -hmm. Hands up in patty cake position. I'm already losing my balance. <laughs> <laughs> and here we, go. here we go. And then when what we're going to do is we're going to try and push each other without moving our feet so that the other person steps off their imaginary tightrope. If you step off, step right back on again and keep going until we tell you to stop. Okay. When the music starts, you starts. Ready? There we go. Okay. Go. <laughs> Work that upper body. Push hard against your partner. Go high and low. Oh, oh, point. Okay. okay. I lost. Jane's got a point. All right. So we keep going and we're working it. I'm working it. Oh, there we go. And, and great. Okay. And stop. Good great. Good job, everybody. I could well see done. you could I can see that giving you a workout. It, yes. it could. And another great thing about instant activities like that is you notice it doesn't have we don't have any props. We didn't need any equipment sure. for it. So it's cost effective. Kids love it. You got music going, music makes everything better. Everything's more fun with music. Uh, and it also works, you know, especially in the in the upper grades. If you have kids on a period schedule and they're coming late to PE and they see everybody's out, they can immediately jump in and join that game. You can do it in three. So if you had an odd number of kids, this is an easy thing to do in a group of three, and it's a lot of fun. So those are those are great strategies, cost-effective strategies, and it's one of the things that you can do to improve the activity level, the MVPA level of every PE lesson that you give. And I can see, as you say, it's important to get people involved immediately. Immediately. Sure. No big setup, no explanation of what's going on. Everybody gets it right off the bat. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. exactly. Well, well, Jane, let me ask you, you're the perfect person to ask then. What can school boards do to, to make a, a tangible impact to make sure that this kind of physical activity is actually being promoted, being suggested, being implemented? I think it's important for the staff to educate the school board on what's happening with fitness in their school district. And, and it begins with data. Uh, look at the physical fitness tests. See how our kids are doing. Throughout the state, it's, it's not a good story. And in particular, in our school district, our kids are challenged. Also, in our particular situation, our students, we have the um, second highest obesity rate in the state mm. and uh, very little play area. We're 0.7 park space to 1,000, uh, 0.7 acres to 1,000 residents where the average is 7.9 acres to 1,000. So it's very compelling in our school district, the responsibility, the moral imperative of getting our kids out there and getting them fit. So the story told well, there's, there's no option. And I think giving, given the facts and then given the tools to make it happen, um, all school boards would, would promote this and support it. Given that information, it's, Absolutely. it's a natural decision. I, I believe so. Now, we've talked about adults, we've talked about school boards and the like. Ken, let me go back to you for just a moment. What role do the students play in sort of promoting a culture where vigorous physical right. activity is really something that right. they want to do, they should do? Right. Well, the, the kids are important. They're, they're the key. They are the banner wavers. They're the torch bearers. Um, schools that have great PE programs need to send those kids home and promote that information and promote those programs to their, to their families. Things that we've done in the past is we've had family aerobic nights where we teach the kids a little short aerobic routine. They go home and teach it to their parents, bring it back, and we all do it together. Um, we've done tumbling demonstrations. We've done dance shows. We have family game nights. So it's ways of bringing parents on campus, mm -hmm. which is important um, in any academic setting. Mm -hmm. But it's also a great way to showcase your program because parents will come when their babies are mm -hmm. on stage. Absolutely. They will come and, and see their kids. And it's a great way to promote the great things that you're doing. Um, but you can also do things like have students lead activities during uh, recess or during lunch. You can have your student leaders out there um, leading the games for the younger kids, role modeling what being physically active and what great physical education really looks like. Um, and then in, in terms of, of getting the kids to be motivated to do these activities, let them have some choice. Um, that's really key. What we've done is we'll throw in a whole bunch of new activities, and then after we're done, we'll ask the kids for feedback. 
And then the stuff that they like, we keep it. If we like it too, we'll keep it. And if they don't like it, we switch it out and get something in. And then eventually you're going to build a program where every kid cannot wait to get out there and, and be physically active. And you have a quality physical education program that's meeting everybody's needs. You know, we talked earlier about when we started this discussion, economic times, economic realities. Let me ask you, Jane, what about cost, this will come up, I'm sure, cost versus benefit, because cost is an issue in most districts these days. Well, the way that our income comes in is through attendance, and obviously healthy kids come to school. Uh, so I think it, it, it improves attendance rates, plus they want to come to school because it's fun. And um, the other piece is that I think you have to be creative. You have to reach out to your community partners, your, your local hospitals, your local health agencies, and bring them in and as partners to make it happen. Uh, the YMCA helped do our training for our teachers. Uh, we are very closely related with Latino Health Access and we're working on a project to open up our schools after school. So if you, it, you know what you want and you spread your message, I believe that you'll get support from the community to help you move forward and, and make it happen. So yeah. it, it, if I may ask you for a follow-up there, sure. it's really important to empower everybody to help make that push to get those decisions made. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a city concern. Mm -hmm. It's important that our city government knows, that our, our local uh, elected officials know. Our, we just had uh, Senator Correa just had an a anti-obesity fair at one of our schools two or three weeks ago. Get the word out to parents and then bring parents in and help them, train them. We have cooking classes for them. We have uh, activities such as the ones that Ken were meant, was mentioning. So it's, it's a real community effort. That, that, that can work even in these difficult times. And Ken, you mentioned something that I would have never have thought about, which I'm mm -hmm. sure for young people would be great, and dancing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dancing, was success with that kind of approach? Huge success. Sure. Uh, we've taught dance in our middle school physical education programs for years. We've done swing, we've done line, we do square dancing. Square dancing is in the standards for eighth grade, explicitly lined out. Um, and the kids absolutely love it. This year we brought in a dance consultant uh, from the Long Beach area who's doing two-week dance academies at every one of our school sites, teaching the kids merengue, waltz, hip-hop, uh, all kinds of dances and every Friday night we put on a show for the parents so the parents get to come every Friday night and go walk into the gym and see what we're doing and the kids love it and people think the fourth graders are doing the waltz people think fourth graders aren't gonna hold each other's hands and, and do <laughs> they are into it they love it and the first time that they dip that girl the crowd goes bananas like somebody <laughs> just won so the World Series <laughs> so yeah it, it really is kids love to dance and if you present it in the right way it's super super effective well let me yeah. let me ask a question to all three of you for an answer and let me start with you doctor what do you see as the most effective way to communicate to those who are making decisions about what kind of activity should be taking place, how often, all of those things. Mm -hmm. How do you think you motivate people to make those decisions to show how important it is and move forward in the right way? Yeah. Well, it, it is about making decisions and policies at the school or district mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. So um, we can't count on each individual teacher to, to mm -hmm. take it on by themselves. They, they need that support. And so to, I, I would like to see two directions of, of education and influence. One, coming from uh, the policy uh, level like the California School Boards Association, other professional organizations, <laughs> to adopt uh, obesity prevention, to adopt uh, moderate to vigorous physical activity as a priority. Uh, in their educational systems. Um, so that will filter down to the, the district level, to the school level. At the same time, um, I would like to see parents um, go to the schools, look at the physical education, and see if it looks active to them, see if it looks like uh, kids are having fun, see if it looks like um, they're learning things that they can use outside of class. Um, and if they don't see those things or they um, see that the schools are not meeting standards, they need to talk to the, the principal. They need to talk to the school board and to the superintendent. So I think we need that kind of dual um, communication from the top and from the grassroots uh, to really uh, <coughs> make moderate to vigorous physical activity in school take hold. 
Now, Jane, let me ask you, because you're there with the school mm -hmm. boards all the mm -hmm. time as superintendent, what's your opinion on directions and effective ways to, to get people to move in that, in that correct direction? Well, again, telling the story, but also there's the what's in it for me. And I think that if, we, particularly with our teachers, with some of the wonderful training that we've had, uh, it's teacher friendly. They see immediate results. It's easy for them to do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an important piece. So then we have teachers that are cheerleaders as well as the kids going home. We uh, invite our parents and we have fitness centers at our school where they can they can be a part of it. So I think it's engaging people in the the in the problem solving and in the fun and it, it and making it as easy as possible for people to do it. I like what you're saying, problem solving and fun. Yes, the whole thing. yes. And, and Ken, that's, I, I've got to believe, just as what you were saying about dancing, that's yeah. got to be an important element in the whole picture. You know, fun is my favorite F word. It really is. <laughs> and it's really, fun is underrated in education. Uh, it really is underrated. Sometimes we think if it's fun, then it's frivolous. When you're talking about exercise and leading a healthy lifestyle, it has to be fun. If it's not fun, if it's a drag, you won't do it. As adults, we won't do it if we're not enjoying it. So teaching that love of it, that, that it's fun, is, is key. And, uh, you know, if I can just jump off one thing, we were talking about um, activities and, and making it fun for kids and meeting their needs. One thing we did is we joined the Governor's Challenge. And in 2008, my middle school was named Middle School of the Year for the Governor's Challenge. And the reward was, the big grand, grand prize was a $100,000 interactive fitness lab for our school. So what we have at, at our Cecil Avenue Middle School is we have a fitness lab that's full of PS2s and televisions, but every PS2 is hooked up to a, a stationary bike, uh, dance pads. Um, so any game that you could play on a PS2, instead of using the controller and, and being a couch potato, you have to move to get the people on the screen to move. You have to pedal to make the motorcycle go. If you stop, the motorcycle stops and the guy falls off. So, and that's the video game generation. We know that, that that's contributing to the Wait. obesity problem. Right, And so we got to hit these kids where they live, and where they live is in front of that screen, but if we can substitute sedentary seat time for active time and they're still playing against each other, they don't even realize they're exercising because they're having such a good time competing against each other. It's fun, and they're going to want to get that at home. You know, and, and it's just it's a, a great way to meet their needs is take something that they love and it's actually causing a problem and turn it into a positive. Jane, you look like you want to I jump in here with something. something. I did, add. I did. We, we just won the Governor's Fitness Challenge for this year. Congratulations. And awesome. we signed up 54,000 students to commit to, was it three 20 minute periods act of activity mm -hmm. a week and right. sign their parents up and our elementary school won it. And so I think that that makes a big difference. You know, the competition is there, and um, our principals now have already found out how soon they can sign up mm -hmm. because yeah. they want their school to uh, participate. And so uh, it's it's a great thing, and uh, it, it's a, a reward. It's a community awareness, mm -hmm. and it's fun. Yeah, and just to add in for the for the people that'll be watching this video to go back to the cost effective, it costs nothing to join the Governor's Challenge. Yep. It costs nothing to have the kids be active outside of school. Um, going back to the PE standards, every grade level has some kind of standard about moderate to vigorous physical activity. And those standards were meant to be outside of school. They're meant to be met outside of the school ground. So this is a great way you send the calendar home, the kids put down what they did, it's like PE homework. The parents can sign it. Yes, my child really did that. And they dragged me outside to do it with them. And you turn it in, and then, then you have a tangible proof that the kids are being active outside of school and meeting that moderate to vigorous um, physical activity that the gym was talking about. So it, it's, it's a great cost-effective way to do it, and it gets the whole community involved. Uh, doctor, let me finish with you, because it seems to me that carried out effectively, this has benefits for the entire community. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, obviously, the kids are getting the most benefit from their health and from their education and from their enjoyment angle. Um, but, you know, uh, active kids are less likely to get in trouble, yes. and that, that helps out everybody right. else. But one, one point that I wanted to make, uh, especially to school officials, is there are, actually, there are numerous opportunities um, at school and throughout the school day to help kids get physical activity. And we've been mainly talking about physical education, which of course is the centerpiece because that affects all kids, hopefully every day. Um, but there are other things uh, that we have evidence about. As a researcher, you know, I think we should start with things that we have evidence works. And so active PE works. 
active classroom breaks, just taking a break in the middle of your language or, or math lesson for 10 minutes, being active right, at, right in the classroom helps kids focus. And some schools are now using activity breaks as preparation for test taking mm -hmm. yeah. because oh, they've yeah. seen mm -hmm. how much better kids are, are paying attention and focusing. So that's important. Recess in, in elementary school. Some kids are active, some kids are not. But if you put equipment out, um, if you uh, uh, do really simple things like draw game designs on the playgrounds, right. very cheap, and kids get more activity mm -hmm. that way. And then, of course, taking advantage of before school, um, having supervision after lunch, uh, uh, and then after school. All of these are opportunities for improving the educational uh, environment by getting kids active. Well, thank you today. This, as we can see, is all critically important, and the information that you've shared with us is very valuable in an approach that districts might take or individuals might take to move forward to make sure that their school, their kids, their community gets a lot more active. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.